stopped it. They have third down and what is that, about three or four? Yeah. The ball is marked uh, very near the 13-yard line. They've got to go to the 15 just to cross it to get the timeout. Here's Jim. Well, it won't be like this next week for a lot of these Nebraska faithful. Some of them are probably looking ahead to next week. You might wonder why. Well, on Tuesday, about 16,000 of these Nebraska fans are going to board planes and head to Honolulu and Hawaii. 16,000 of them will be out there, most of them for more than five days. Nebraska plays University of Hawaii in Honolulu next Saturday. Travel agents estimate that each of the people who goes will spend an average of about $1,000 and that the whole trip will mean more than $10 million in income for the economy of Hawaii. It's also another illustration of the fact that Nebraska has perhaps the largest, most loyal on-the-road following of any team in college football. Interesting to note that a lot of those people who go to Hawaii will come back, prep for a couple weeks, and then charge off to Miami for the Orange Bowl if the Huskers can win today. Keith? All right, Jim. Remember now, if they get the first down, the clock will stop again as they move the chains, and Tom Lott keeps it, and Thomas is up for the first down. So the clock stops again now at 117 while the chains are put in place. You never know how, how important that first down was because they could have forced a punting situation into that wind, and Nebraska would have gotten great field position. Now they have four more cracks or three more cracks at it, and they should be able to run that clock off now. First down for Oklahoma. The football is at the 19-yard line. The garb of the hardy souls on the sidelines, Barry Switzer there, indicates to you the relative temperature. Well, there's nothing there for that one, is there? Thomas Lott gave to Kenny King, a pair of sophomores, just nothing there as the defensive uh, line of Nebraska just collapsed on them, led by Pruitt, Foltz, and Pullen. The football is sitting back near the 18-yard line with 47 seconds remaining in the first half and Oklahoma leading 7-3. to three. Tonight, Heisman Trophy candidate Tony Dorsett leads top-ranked Pittsburgh in a prime-time collision with Penn State. See the number one team in the country battle Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions tonight at 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. Well... The wind continuing to blow. It's gusting now. They tell me up in the neighborhood of 40 miles an hour sometimes. But uh, so far, the punters have been able to handle it pretty well. And the flags are fully stretched, as you can see. I'll tell you one thing, Eric Parsegan. If it doesn't snow today or tonight, it's going to miss one heck of an opportunity. <laughs> you know, this has been the interesting thing about the kicking game. Uh, I thought there would be a, a greater difference in kicking downwind as opposed to into the wind, but the kickers, as you've indicated, have done very well. Nebraska with one timeout remaining. 47 seconds. Oklahoma second down. 11. Horace Ivory running behind two blockers. And Mike Fultz, number 72. Percy Eichelberger, 44, over there to make the defensive play for the Huskers. And now Nebraska will spend the last timeout to stop the clock at 30. Five seconds to go in the first half. And the funniest act in town has just happened. Jimmy Ritz, our statistician, chasing his cards all over the booth as the wind comes in to whoop it around. <laughs> Down on the field, half frozen. Here's Jim. Lampley? A lot of you people might have seen our show run for the Heisman that immediately preceded this game. Here's a guy who's got one tucked away somewhere, Steve Owens. Steve, uh, you've watched this Oklahoma football team all year. Thomas Lott has made a heck of a difference in the offense. Well, he really has. I've seen him. He's gotten better every game. And, uh, you know, a kid came in here as a sophomore. They put him against Texas, which was sort of an unfair test for him because it's such a big game. But he came. He's, he's gotten better every game. He's really playing super. I think he's going to be a great, great player in the future. What do you think of the Heisman Trophy candidates this year? Well, I tell you, two really great players. A lot of great people in the country. But, you know, uh, Ricky Bell and uh, Tony Dorsett are great. And both of them, I think, are deserving of the Heisman Trophy. It's just unfortunate only one of them can win it. Bell's a lot like you. I think he might be a little bit stronger, a little bit faster, probably a heck of a lot better football player than I was. And, you know, it's just unfortunate, but I think both of them will have uh, great pro uh, uh, careers. Steve, you carried the ball 30, 35 times a game in college. Can Bell do that in the pros? Well, I don't know if anybody can do that in the pros consistently. I know he's strong, but he can do it. Okay, Steve Owens. Keith? Thomas Lott going down the line. He gets lassoed around the 21-yard line. And I wonder if I can rent that coat from Steve Owens in the second half. Clock running, 20 seconds. Tony Dorsett, of course, will be on tonight against Penn State at Three River Stadium at 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. And tomorrow afternoon, Ricky Bell will be running against the Fighting Irish. 
going to be two great backs going. Of course, uh, we'll look forward to that game. And as we indicated, tonight's outcome in that uh, Pittsburgh Penn State game will be significant. There's the cannon. The first half is over. The score after the first half of play, Oklahoma 7, Nebraska 3. Here's Jim. Well, Barry Switzer is keeping pretty warm. Coach, uh, one of the most interesting things I think about this first half is the difference Thomas Lott has made in your offense. He's really come on. He's improved steadily the last four weeks, and that's why we've become a pretty good offensive team, Jim. He's uh, handled the offense very well, and uh, that's why we've got a chance today. You satisfied with the first half? Right. Disappointed that we're offsides, and we got the ball first and goal at the four, and we don't make it 14 to three. That hurt us, and, but uh, we're playing pretty good, playing well in defense. That, um, Happy about that. You're going to play with the wind again in the second half? Well, it'll be their choice. I, I think they might take the ball. I hope they do. Okay. Thanks very much for spending time with us, Barry Switzer. We'll be back to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska for the Fireman's Fund flashback and other halftime activities after this word about an upcoming show on ABC. Sunday, it's America's favorite family. From the producers of Donnie and Marie, it's the all-new Brady Bunch Variety Hour. Then, a rescue mission turns into a supersonic trap for Steve Austin. Pull up, Steve. A special two-hour adventure. Then, no woman is safe. Oh, honey. The breach does not in service at this time. She's capable of carnal thoughts. Starsky and Hutch right after the Brady Bunch and the Six Million Dollar Man. Sunday starting at 7, 6 Central and Mountain on ABC. Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, where Oklahoma leads Nebraska 7-3. Our Fireman's Fund flashback today is going to take us back to what has to be the all-time classic among Oklahoma-Nebraska games. The year was 1971, just five years ago. Both Oklahoma and Nebraska came down to the end of the season unbeaten and untied. Ranked first and second in the country, it was the game for the national championship. It was inevitably called the game of the century. Some people think it was the best and most exciting college football game ever played. The Fireman's Fund flashback is brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance. And Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent near you. Johnny Rogers, the man around whom a lot of the pregame attention centered, a lot of people felt that if his particular kind of lightning struck, it could make the difference in Nebraska's favor. And it happened early in the first quarter, the very first time Rogers touched the football. He takes a punt on his own 28-yard line and dances down the sideline 72 yards to put the Cornhuskers on top, 7 to nothing. Then in second quarter action, second and goal from the one-yard line. Jeff Kinney, the Nebraska fullback, number 35, goes over and it's 14-3 Nebraska lead. Kinney's first touchdown of the day. Jack Mildred comes back in the wishbone for Oklahoma. He scores on the next series from the two-yard line and it's 14-10. Now Mildred again dropping back from the 22-yard line. He hits John Harrison and Nebraska falls behind Oklahoma 17-14. But early in the third quarter, first and goal from the three-yard line. Kenny with his second touchdown of the day. Nebraska goes back on top, 21 to 17. In the next series for Nebraska, once again from the three-yard line, it's Kenny again, his third TD, and the Huskers lead 28 to 17. Jack Mildren coming back. He goes to the left side again in the third quarter, 28-24 Nebraska. And now, from the 16-yard line in the fourth quarter, Mildren hits John Harrison a second time. And the fans in Norman go crazy as Oklahoma goes on top, 31 to 28. But now, with less than five minutes remaining, late in the fourth quarter, Jeff Kenny not to be denied. He gets his fourth touchdown from the two, and Nebraska 
becomes number one. They went on to win an Orange Bowl victory over Alabama that solidified their national championship. You know, at Fireman's Fund, for years we've been telling you, no matter what kind of insurance protection you may need, just look for our symbol, the big red fire hat. Well, actually, there's another symbol that's just as important to look for. And here it is. It's the symbol of the man who sells our insurance. The independent agent. The very independent agent. Because he represents not only us, but many fine companies. And that leaves him free to pick and choose to get you the very best deal around. So at Fireman's Fund, we hope you remember our symbol. But even if you forget it, make sure you remember this one. The symbol of the man who serves you first. Your independent insurance agent. When it comes to protection, our hat is off to the one symbol it pays you to know. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies, subsidiaries of American Express. As you rejoin us in Lincoln, Nebraska, let's spend the next few minutes with the University of Nebraska Marching Band. This band is celebrating its 97th birthday this year. It's one of the oldest marching bands in the country, the Marching Red. 210 instrumentalists, 26 flag bearers, three drum majors, and one solo twirler under the direction of Dr. Robert A. Vaught, the University of Nebraska Music Department. <laughs> This music is from the Broadway musical hit, A Chorus Line. marching band. The Nebraska band will be on the field later at halftime. The Oklahoma marching band is under the direction of Mr. Gene Thrailkill. Pride of Oklahoma. Let's take a look at a very important research program that's ongoing now at the University of Nebraska. The Cornhuskers represent the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, one of the great state universities and land-grant colleges of the Midwest, with a vigorous program of teaching, service, and research. At NU's Department of Food Science and Technology, the Food Protein Research Group is taking a multitude of protein sources and blending them to get a pattern of the eight essential amino acids, which are vital for, for human nutrition. 
The urgency for research such as this can be seen in the fact that today, half of the people of the world are on protein-deficient diets, and in only 24 years, the population of the world will double. Computer technology helps researchers to determine the best ways to combine these new sources of protein with more conventional food products. With the great food belt of the American Midwest becoming increasingly important to the hungry people of the world, the improvement of food quantity and quality are the never-ending goals of the research. Tensile strength is only one of many performance properties in a tire, but it's one of the most important. Flex 10, a Goodyear exclusive, was developed from a man-made aramid fiber that is pound for pound stronger than steel. Flex 10, the tire court of the future from Goodyear. Stanley salutes the Turner's Cafe doors. Carol Dillon's beautiful window. Stanley salutes this whole new generation who enjoy doing things with their own two hands. They know that to do things right, you have to work with the best. And that means Stanley. Stanley, we want to help you do things right. Hey, beautiful table, Ken and Peggy Kohler. Stanley Tools, hardware and drapery hardware. We want to help you do things right. Coach Osborne, I can't help but think that the cold has affected your receivers in your passing game some. Well, I think more than the cold, it's been the wind. Jim, you know, it's been quite a factor, and uh, we're going to take the wind this quarter. We hope that we can get some things going offensively. Of course, we also got to get the ball away from them some, too. They've been controlling the ball a little bit on us. You make a couple changes in your running game to find some holes? Well, I hope so. We've, we think we've made some adjustments. We'll just have to see how they work out. Okay, thanks very much for spending time with us, Coach Tom Osborne. And now let's go back upstairs for Keith Jackson and Ara Parsegan. All right, Jim, the halftime statistics reflect this way, with Oklahoma having dominated the first half of play. 191 total yards to 125, and they still have the better part of a six-minute edge era in the possession of the ball. Right, and if you happen to be an advocate of a, a running ball club and stating that the teams that run the ball are the winning teams, of course, you certainly would lean heavily on Oklahoma because they have 191 rushing yards and absolutely zero passing. They haven't put the ball up in the air, haven't attempted to do so, and have been very successful in the last five games uh, without throwing the ball. So here they are. They're going to have to fight the wind again, and Nebraska will probably put up in the air if they get the ball in this quarter. The wind, uh, the uh, chill factor now with the wind, and the temperature is minus 7. You have to keep reminding me, <laughs> The Oklahoma Sooners will receive the second-half kickoff, and starting in the backfield for Oklahoma, we presume, will be the same group that started. Thomas Lott at quarterback, number 6. The running backs out of the wishbone, Elvis Peacock, 4, and Horace Ivory, 32. And the fullback... Jimmy Colbert started the game, number 41, was relieved by number 30, Kenny King. The deep men for Oklahoma are Lee Hover, number 9, bottom of the picture, and Freddie Nixon, number 11, top of the picture. And Al Evelyn will be kicking off for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Uh, no, it's going to be Vandermeer, number 1. Ron Vandermeer out of Tracy, California. And I don't believe that they'll be able to keep the ball on the tee. Somebody's going to have to come and hold it, well, just as we did to start the game. It's just like starting the last nine on the last uh, in the tournament. This is a big uh, half for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, a co-championship, an orange bowl opportunity. So this is 30 minutes of football. It's real important during the night in the closing uh, season of 1966 year, 76 years. High, high, high kick. Way up. Over. Three-yard line. Got a hole. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Fumble. Oklahoma. Oh, they called it dead. Let's take a look and see whether or not this ball was fumbled prior to the time that he hit the ground. Let's see if we get a good camera shot of it. He gets a great scene from upstairs. It looked like he might crack and go all the way. 
There he is, knocked down. The ball comes out. It's a judgment call on the part of the official. He was on his back when the ball came out, and it could be called either way. Very young hit him, knocked it loose. First down, Oklahoma, 27 yard line. Thomas Lott, quarterback, dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Good defensive play by Ray Phillips, the left end for Nebraska. Steve Rhodes, the split end for Oklahoma, number 24. The big guys in the trenches, Baldersweiler, Melendez, number 60. Farthing is the center. Roberts on the right side, teams up with uh, Big Mike Vaughn, number 79. And the tight end is number 80, Victor Hicks. Second down, about 11 yards to go. Lott gives it to the second man, and Nebraska penetrates. Phillips is there. And they get Horace Ivory in a hurry. Number 98, Tony Samuel was in, and Fultz was the big horse in the middle that really caused the trouble. 72. Let's, let's see how he shed the blocker. Nobody blocks him here. He just comes right on through, and Horace Ivory sees Fultz eye to eye. Nobody blocked him. Colbert is at fullback on third down and 10. And Colbert has the ball out across the 30 to about the 31, maybe. Velasic and Phillips making the tackle. And that brings up a punting down for the Oklahoma Sooners. So, folks, Samuel et al. do a job, don't they? As the defensive unit, the linebackers of Phillin and Whiteman in the secondary for Nebraska, Smith, Butterfield, Harvey, Velasic. Mickey Hatcher is in the punt. He's got to hit it into the wind. Not a bad kick. Now let's see how it bounces. And it takes an Oklahoma roll going back to the Nebraska 33 yard line. Cornhuskers will have it first down at the 33 and operating in the backfield for Nebraska. Vince Ferragamo at quarterback number 15. Working out of the eye formation, it's the deep man Monty Anthony. The fullback is Dodie Donnell. Your wing back is Dave Shamblin, 81. Horn Huskers wearing the home red shirts and trailing in the ball game by a score of 7-3. to three. Their first offensive possession of the second half with the wind at their back. That's Richard Burns coming out of the I formation. He starts instead of Anthony and he takes it to the Oklahoma 42-yard line. He ran it over the left side behind Dan Schmidt, number 51. Schmidt really threw a block for it. You know, Tom Osborne alluded to some blocking changes there when he was interviewed just before the beginning of the second half. And from that play, it sounds or it appears that they did make some changes. Let's see what happens in the rest of the half. Burns went for 26 yards on the carry. Oklahoma 42 for the Huskers. First step. Take it up the middle. It is the fullback, Donnell. Hit twice, falls forward inside the 30. Here are the big guys up front who are moving the Huskers right now. Some great blocking. Bobby Thomas, the little fella. He's the split end. But here are the big guys. Lingenfelder, 70. Schmidt, 51, the guard. Davis, 52 at center. Jorgensen, 63, the right side. Coins uh, at right tackle. And Spaith, the tight end. First down, call at the 29-yard line to pitch to Burns. He takes a hard hit from Darrell Hunt, but not until he reaches the 24-yard line. So that is the most authoritative move that Nebraska has made in the ball game. Well, they're coming off the line of scrimmage. Okay, here comes their leading tackler again, number 85, Hunt. There he is. Looked like Burns was going to make more yardage. The play was well blocked at the point of attack, but Hunt came over and wiped off and made a great tackle. Just inside the 25, as you can see, second down and five. Thomas is wide right. Ferragamo gives it to the fullback, and Donnell is to the 20. Close to a first down as Obi Moore and David Hudgens make the tackle for Oklahoma. Well, they look like they were inspired at halftime based on this drive thus far. Deep is the unit for the Sooners. Phillips, Hudgens, Murray, Tabor, Selmeyer. Up front, linebackers Moore and Hunt. Secondary for Oklahoma, Peters, Hebert, Hill, and Henderson. Here's where the going gets tough. Third and one at the 20. Ferragamo keeps, punches, first down. 
first down, Nebraska. It'll be close to the Oklahoma 18-yard line. As soon as we conclude this drive, one way or the other, we'll spend a moment to visit with the fellow who has left Southern California, where there are temperatures in the 70s and 80s, to come to vacation in the wintertime at Lincoln, where the temperature is 22. First down, Husker. The home folks are roaring at the 18-yard line. Ferragamo pitches to Burns. Burns is up into the 16-yard line. Bud Hebert, number 33 in white, took his feet from under him. Now it quiets down a little bit as they get down into nervous country. Burns nine carries and 49 yards so far in the game here in the third quarter with the Sooners leading the Huskers seven to three. Nebraska wins. They go to Miami for the Orange Bowl. If they lose, they go to Houston for the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl. Oklahoma all set for the Fiesta on Christmas Day against Wyoming. Second down, eight. Ferragamo to throw it. Throws to Shambling at the ten. He's felt it out at the seven. Shamblin's quite a receiver. He just drives up the field. He lets Bobby Thomas uh, clear out. Comes underneath it here. Turns underneath where the clear out has taken place. And the ball's right there. And a first down at the seven-yard line. Scott Hill knocked him out of bounds for Oklahoma. Shook him up, holding his left arm. Shamblin has left the field. Craig is in at the wing back. Molito wide to the left. First down, goal to go at the Oklahoma seven. Ferragamo pitches it wide. Here comes Craig, the wing back, reversing into the end zone. And the Orangers start coming over the field. Nebraska takes the lead for the first time in the ball game. With 9.56 to go in the third quarter. Nebraska Cornhuskers look very impressive as they go 67 yards in nine plays, and they do it most of the way on the ground. Al Evelyn in for the extra point try out of Ferragamo's hold. If it's good, then the Huskers will lead by three. It was an excellent drive. and 56 seconds to play in the third quarter and Nebraska has taken the lead over Oklahoma 10-7. Before you buy a CB system, find out where the radio goes. The high gain 9 goes in the trunk. Out of sight. A cable leads to this mic speaker unit with volume, squelch, and digital channel readout. It even disconnects so you can lock it away. And the high gain 9 can be remanufactured for 40 channels. After January 1st, send this certificate to High Gain with $25. The High Gain 9. It's out of sight. High Gain. We keep people talking. It's your face that chick. Love it. It's your face that chick. Love it. It's your face that chick. Love it. Push, pull, click, click. The Schick Injector System loves your face this quick. Push, pull, click, click, and you lock a Teflon-coated blade into place for a really smooth, close shave. It's your face that chick loves it. Chick injector system, regular or twin blades. From ground level, watch Curtis Craig, 33, come around, and a big block thrown over there by number 88. Great fake to uh, Burns, but number 16, Peters, buys the package on the inside. Takes the fake inside, and of course, the end result is a touchdown for Nebraska. If he'd have stayed home, uh, he probably would have stopped that for at least a three or four yard gain. Here's another angle from it. See, Peters, number 16, goes to the inside right there, and he's blocked by Dufresne, number 88. And Nebraska has the lead by a score of 10 to 3 as Lee Hover, 9, and Freddie Nixon go back deep for the white shirted Oklahoma Sooners. And Vandermeer kicks it off for Nebraska. And that one will go into the next county. There will be no return on that one. 
Now, the gentleman that I mentioned a moment ago who has left warm Southern California to come back here to Lincoln, Nebraska and live for a while, Gordon McRae. Gordon McRae, of course, one of the great singing voices in the country. Now, you explain to me why in the world you moved back to Nebraska for the winter. Well, I haven't. Actually, uh, we haven't moved here. We were going to spend a couple of months here, Keith. My little daughter, Mandy, fell down and broke her teeth early in the year, so she hadn't seen snow. She's eight and a half years old. And I don't know what happened. We played nine holes of golf yesterday. Uh -huh. That's <laughs> that old fishing story. You should have been here. Here comes uh, Oklahoma now, looking for a little quiet from the crowd that is really roaring. So while that's going on, I want to remind everybody that uh, we've got a pretty fair ball game coming up tonight at 9 Eastern time here on ABC, the second half of our doubleheader as top-ranked Pittsburgh with Tony Dorsett goes against arch-rival Penn State. That'll be out of Three River Stadium tonight at 9 Eastern time as Pittsburgh tries to hang on to that top ranking in the country to win a national championship. Now here's Oklahoma. First down at the 20. Watt keeps it. He's up across the 25 to the 26. Gordon McRae, you're, you're a good Husker fan, I presume. Yes, I am. It's a wonderful town, and it's a wonderful crowd, and the spirit here is always great, no matter what happens, win or lose. Keith, you're doing a great job, you and Aaron. It's good to see you again. Well, I, I, look, I look forward to seeing you back out on the warm uh, old lakeside golf course or somewhere. We'll be back there pretty soon. Okay. Gordon McRae, who is now living in Lincoln for a while. Colbert carries. Well, the Oklahoma Sooners hits to the 30-yard line. He's probably going to have a first down as he just wedged across the 30. I think uh, Nebraska would like to get the ball back a couple more times in this quarter, take advantage of the win, because in the fourth period, they're going to be fighting it. Nine o'clock tonight, Pitt and Penn State. Right here, the Huskers and the Sooners are having at it, with Nebraska leading now 10 to 7, and Thomas Lott keeps the ball on the option, turns it up, and there are three red shirts right there to get a hold of him. One of them is number 96, George Andrews, who had trailed the play, and Jim Whiteman, 59. Lott now with 11 carries and 52 yards in the ball game. He's a dangerous runner. He, can, he really handles that option exceptionally well. Put a little fake on, and uh, he's a strong runner. You know who he reminds me of, Era? He and uh, Rod Gerald, Woody Hayes, uh, quarterback at Ohio State, very much alike. Yeah, but I think he's a little bigger, Keith. Yeah, he's he 196 is. pounds. He's, he's a real good. man. I'd say Gerald's a good, good sized fellow, but he's not quite as heavy. Second down and four from the 36 yard line. It is Horace Ivory diving okay. for the first down. Looks like Pillen and Whiteman, the two linebackers for Nebraska, may have held him just short. Well, if I was Tom Osborne on the sideline, uh, from a coaching standpoint, I'd be a little upset in here because I want that ball back. That wins in my favor, and I can't get it. Oklahoma's keeping it. The other side, of course, Switzer is delighted with the ability of his team to move the ball into the wind. Third down, a yard to go, just short of the 40 for Oklahoma. Lot still got it. Nebraska's got it. George Andrews, number 96, recovers. Mike Fultz penetrated and knocked it loose. Big play. Big Mike Fultz is having a big day. Sure is. He's been hitting on a lot of key plays. It'll be Nebraska's ball. First down at the Oklahoma, just short of the Oklahoma 32-yard line. Burns is the eye back behind Donnell and Ferragamo, the quarterback. Burns has got it. Give it to Thomas. Back to Ferragamo. Throwing for space. He's got it down inside the tent. There's a little fancy stuff for you. Isn't that, isn't that the one we saw uh, Missouri run against Nebraska? All right, here's the replays, the fumble first. Watch Fultz, 72, really popping. Here's Lott. The ball shakes loose. It's Fultz again, comes across and does a great job. This now here's Faith uh, going yeah, down. Faith just comes down. He gets tangled up here. You'll watch right here. He gets tangled up with Peters, then breaks across the field. And he gets the pass right there on the numbers, and they're down at the 10-yard line, first down. Now that play went Ferragamo to Burns to Thomas to Ferragamo to Spate. It's like a triple play around the horn. <laughs> Ball is just inside the 10-yard line, where it is first down and goal to go, Nebraska. 
Aradamo, 91 yards, 5 out of 13 in his passing. He keeps it. And goes to the three-yard line. David Hudgens, number 70, the tackle. He's up doing uh, much more optioning in this ball game, Ferragamo I'm talking about, than he did in the previous game that we did. Uh, and he's doing it successfully. Ball at the four-yard line, second down, goal to go. Bobby Thomas and David Shamblin go wide left. Donnell and Burns are the setbacks out of the eye behind Ferragamo. It's Burns. Touchdown! Great effort! So the Nebraska Cornhuskers make an opportunity for themselves and they cash in. Eight and a half minutes of this third period, they have put on 13 points onto the board and going for the 14th here. Tom Davis will snap it. Now <laughs> Evelyn kicks it and gets just enough. It is good. Watch the second effort here of Burns. He was stopped, spun off the stack, and took it in. There it is as we watch it. Burns has stopped here. I watch him give the second effort and turn and lunge the ball across that plane right there. And a score for the Nebraska Corn Husker. Score is now 17-7 Nebraska. How much does an oil company make on a gallon of gasoline? 30 cents. 30 cents. A lot. You can bet on that. Many people think oil companies make a lot more than they do. In the year that ended last June, Texaco, for example, made only an average of about one and a quarter cents per gallon for all petroleum and products sold. And most of that has to go back into getting you the oil and gasoline you need. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. Every year, same thing. Nothing new for fathers, only for kids. But this year, a great new idea from Lionel. It's Power Passers, the fantastic new slotless racers that change lanes. They change lanes. It's called Snap Steer. Snap the trigger, car steers to the right. Snap again, it steers to the left. Hey, kid, don't mess with a pro. <laughs> it's the greatest invention since the electrical cooker train. Lionel's new Power Passers. Everything that the others have and a whole lot more. The chill factor. Minus seven. I'll preface the next period of action with that little piece of information. And the clouds now getting heavier, lower, as they anticipate snow. And deep is Lee Hober for Oklahoma to receive the kickoff along with Freddie Nixon. Vandermeer hits it, sails it, goes into the end zone, and is kicked out of the end zone. And Oklahoma will take the ball first down and 10 at the 20 yard line with six minutes and 31 seconds to go in the third quarter. You recall, Nebraska got some very good breaks in the first half, but didn't capitalize on them. But in this third period, they got that fumble break from uh, on Watt and took the ball in just a couple plays. So they're utilizing the opportunities they're getting in the third period. Rhodes wide left. Oklahoma sets up in the wishbone. Kenny King, the fullback in motion. Lott keeps it. Trips and falls behind the line of scrimmage from the 18-yard line. Looked like somebody might have stepped on his foot. Yeah, and he went down. Might have tripped on somebody there. As Things are not the going well for the Sooners for the moment. This third period's been tough. The uh, wind advantage has really helped. Uh, but still, on the other hand, you know, Oklahoma was moving that ball into the wind, if you recall, yes. before that lot fumble. It was third and short. <laughs> Wind blowing the ball around. They got to replace it at the 19-yard line. Well, I get the feeling maybe we're getting more wind up here, uh, Keith, than they are down on the field because they have moved, kicked the ball rather well both ways. Second down, 11 yards to go from the 19-yard line of Oklahoma. Lot keeps it. Down he goes behind the line of scrimmage. A 
sensational effort by Jeff Pullen, the middle guard, number 66. They're tightening up their defense. Jeff Pullen got penetration and took a lot just before he could get his uh, get untracked after the fake. There's the win. The flags have been stretched tight all day. There's some pretty good gusts in addition to the way they're stretched out there right now. The football now is sitting back inside the 18-yard line. It is third down, a little more than 12 yards to go for a first down for Oklahoma. Sooners have not been able to untrack here in the third quarter against the Nebraska defense. The Conhunters have taken force Oklahoma to point here. They're going to get that ball in very good field position. I think Oklahoma's going to get ding five yards for too much time right here. So the Cornhuskers come out breathing fire in the third quarter. And they've kind of rocked Oklahoma back onto their heels as Hobart comes in. Bringing a play from Barry Switzer. Maybe they want to get out of this cold weather. Wasn't sure that Miami trip. <laughs> I'm so, the Hawaii and the Miami. Little hole up the middle for Horace Ivory. Gets it back to about the 19 to the 20. And the door is shut by Cletus Pillen, number 61. There's the linebackers for the Nebraska Ball Club. Flowing well, comes back to the inside. Ivory on a little delay. Again, though, Jeff Pillen, or Cletus Pillen, making the tackle, as he has done for most of this ball game. Here's the punt. And the wind got a hold of it. It does take a little Oklahoma roll, but nonetheless, Nebraska gets the football first down at the 42-yard line. 27 yards on the punt, 4-12 to go. Third quarter, the Huskers lead by 10. How about a little beer talk? Did you ever see somebody put salt in his beer to bring the head back up? Well, if you want to, okay. But what salt really does to a good beer is make it salty. We suggest, for a perfect head, just start with Budweiser and pour it smack down the middle. You can save the salt for the popcorn, cause that beechwood wood aged Budweiser taste speaks for itself. And you can take that without a grain of salt. Lester here wears the same outfit every show, but I don't, so I start with Hager slacks. And for today's matinee, I'll add this Hager top. For the supper show, and at midnight, this great suit look, all outfits of Encron polyester double knit. Price so I can afford to look like a headliner. So why don't you buy me Hager slacks? Because Hager doesn't make them for dummies. Hager, America's best known name in slacks. Your lips move. Hi, I'm Tony Dorsett from the University of Pittsburgh. We're having an outstanding season here at the university. We're undefeated and untied. Some people say I have a good chance of winning the Heisman Trophy. But my main objective right now is to beat Penn State. And we'll see if we can do that later this evening on ABC. Four minutes and 12 seconds to play in the third quarter. That means four minutes and 12 seconds for Nebraska to have the wind to their advantage. And it's first down at the Oklahoma 42-yard line. And the Huskers have been tough in the third quarter. Ferragamo gives it to Burns. And that time, Oklahoma's able to get a hold of him. Hunt number 85 and Tabor 74 made the tackle gain of one yard. High school athletics attract some five billion participants each year. Nearly 50% of the student body of most schools involved in the interscholastic program. The National Federation of State High School Associations requesting your support for this important high school program. That message from the NCAA. Second down, nine, from the 41 for Nebraska, and Bergamo gets it away, and it is incomplete. He was throwing for Shamblin. Thomas had gone down the sidelines on a fly pattern. Shamblin running a post, couldn't get it to him. Had him beat. Shamblin had him beat. He broke to the inside, and Farragama threw it to the outside. Otherwise, it looked, I thought from upstairs it would be a touchdown, but uh, missed coordinating on it. Yeah, here's Shamblin breaking up the field. Now watch him go to the inside now. He's got the daylight. He's got his man beat. But Farragama, I think, thought he was going to break outside, and the ball was back over his right shoulder. Not a, not a connection. There was good pressure, however, on Farragama on the throw. Third down, nine from the 41 of Oklahoma. Vince back to throw again. Pumps once, going deep. Deep into the corner, and it is incomplete. Hebert, number 33, 
was the only one of that threesome able to get his hands on the ball. Chuck Melito was pinched in between two defenders. Well, Coach Ferragamo was doing the right thing. This may be the last time uh, this quarter downwind that they have the ball. And of course, as we know, the wind is significant. You know who had dropped off on that, to defend on that pass play, number 85, Hunt, the linebacker, had gone all the way in the corner of the end zone helping defend on it. He's all over the field. So it is a fourth down, and Nebraska will punt with Lesman in, and obviously Randy's going to try to dump it down inside the 10 if he can. There's a the knuckleball. Barakat just called. It's bouncing around. He did his job. Look at that. Oklahoma in a hole. Big oh, hole. Up. Touched the ball and tapped it in, I guess. But they, they signal touchback. Well, let's see. We're going to bring it out to the well, 20. Watch this. It, uh, th they've really got an opportunity to put Oklahoma in a real tough field position. The, we're screened off. Let's see. There's the ball on the oh, yeah. still in the field of play. No, nope. man touched it. He's standing in the end zone. It's a touchback. You got the possession of this ball possession there? Oh, there Doesn't it is. Matter. Yeah, I see the ball. I lost the ball. There it is. Yeah, you touched it. I lost it. So it is a good call. Let's yes. hear it for the officials. Three minutes and 18 seconds. I thought the ball was under the uh, other Nebraska man there. Was. It was touched by the Nebraska man. Which yeah, no, I say good. the other, the guy that was on the one yard line, I thought that he had it. But bad eyesight. <laughs> First down at the 20 for Oklahoma. Lot pitches it wide at Peacock to the sidelines to the 26 yard line for six yards. And Ray Phillips takes him out with Butterfield. And here's Jim. Keep from standing down here all afternoon. I feel like I'm going to become an authority on what really being cold is. One interesting irony is there's no real home field advantage on the wind. As a matter of fact, the way the stadium is built, the way the wind is whipping around, it's about 10 to 15 degrees colder on the Nebraska side of the field and on the Oklahoma side of the field. You can barely stand to stand on the sideline over there. Pretty much warmer on the Oklahoma side. Keith? That's relatively speaking, right? <laughs> Here goes the oh. up the field. Fumbles the ball, dives for it, may get it back. He does. So Oklahoma's Kenny King, the fullback, blows it over the right side behind Vaughn and Roberts. And fumbled the ball, but got it back. Let's see the kind of blocking they put on Pullen here. They're doubling up on him. Oh, look at this. They're driving him off the line. Is that number uh, 60? James Haney Melendez. Melendez, what a block he put on him. All right, it's first down Oklahoma at their own 48-yard line. Big run by King. Lott still got it. Pitches it outside to Horace Ivory. Ivory gets outside and gets yarded. All the way down to the Nebraska 30-yard line. Ted Harvey and Cletus Pillen and Dave Butterfield finally run him down. Jeff Hansen almost got him back upfield, but he just simply outran Hansen. And now with two minutes and 37 seconds to go in the third quarter, Oklahoma is moving again. Nebraska leading by 10, 17 to 7. Anybody looking at that Oklahoma team that says that they don't have exciting runners, Every time one of them gets their hands on the ball, whether it's King, Ivory, or Peacock, there goes King. Kenny King, the fullback, hitting it up over the left side behind Melendez and Baldesweiler, and he's inside the 25 to the 23. That's a gain of about eight yards. Whiteman and Fillin, the tackle for Nebraska. Well, they've got a war going here. We're going to have another one tonight, Pittsburgh, and then tomorrow. Another doubleheader, college football, Army-Navy from Philadelphia starting at 12.30 Eastern time, followed by USC and Notre Dame right here on ABC. Second down. They need about three yards. Colbert is into the ball game at fullback, and Colbert hits him to the 16-yard line of Nebraska. He's got a first down. Hanson and Andrews the tackle. This is the same kind of a drive that Oklahoma put on for their first touchdown in that first quarter. Opening up big holes again, commanding the line of scrimmage, the offensive line firing out of there. They have moved the ball all the way down. You know, interesting to watch the way these two teams are surging against each other. Yeah. Block running, as you can see, coming down on a minute and a half to go. In the third quarter, first down at the Nebraska 16-yard line. Lott still got the ball, turns it. And he doesn't get a whole lot out of it. Maybe four yards as Harvey brings him down with help from Pillen. 
quarter down there inside that 20 yard line. Those 11 men come up and play defense a little tighter. They have less field to worry about. So it's a little tougher to move the ball. Jody Farthing over the ball. Lots turns, gives it to the fullback. And Jim Culbreth, the senior out of Yeadon, Pennsylvania. Things near the 10. Did he get inside the 10? Yes, he did. To about the 9. In fact, he's inside the 9. Now it's going to be third down and about two and a half yards for a first down for Oklahoma. They'll probably use both of those downs, Keith. If they don't make it on this play, I'll bet they go for it on four. So they've got two downs to make two and a half. Second man, Peacock. Percy Eichelberger. And Cletus Pillen. Eichelberger got him, stopped him, and then Pillen came over to help make the tackle. They were held short of the first down. 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. Big play in this old ball game right here. Oklahoma, I would think, would let the time run out. Seven, six, no, nope. on fourth down, they're going to go. If they'd waited, they'd have had a better shot at a field goal if they decided to go for it. Thomas Slott is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Fumbles the ball, they're going to blow it dead before the fumble, and it's going to be blown dead short of the first down. Ooh, it's close. I'm pretty sure he's short of the first down. They'll bring the chains on and try to determine it. Third quarter is over. Nebraska leads 17 to 7. Want to lift America? Climb into a 77 Camaro. Camaro is a driver's car. Low in profile and wide between the wheels. A spirited, responsive road car that feels as good as it looks. A lift, America, not just a ride. Sample it yourself. Test drive a spirited 77 Camaro at your Chevrolet dealers now. Car 88 responding. This is Bob Hope for Texaco. Recently, more than 40 state trooper cars using Haviland Super Premium all-temperature motor oil were driven a total of over 2 million grueling miles. Of the engines taken apart and inspected, none showed any sign of unusual wear. With Haviland's carefully balanced formulation, you get all this protection without buying any extra motor oil additive. Trust Texaco to protect your car like a trooper with Haviland's super premium all-temperature motor oil. Double action with Starsky and Hutch and Most Wanted tomorrow on ABC. Oklahoma missed by the better part of a yard at getting the first down. And now Nebraska takes over the ball, first down at their own seven yard line. And now Nebraska goes into the win. But they go into the win in the fourth quarter with 10 point lead. A victory sends them to the Orange Bowl. They share the conference title with Colorado and Oklahoma State. Ferragamo hands the ball to Richard Burns coming out of that deep back position of the I formation and Oklahoma gets him right about the line of scrimmage. Richard Murray, 76. There's a replay with uh, Murray wiping off to his left. Took a shoulder, really. It was actually what we call stunning to the strong side of the formation and he shut the play off very well. And it is second down and 10 from the seventh. 
for Nebraska. Pressure's on the Oklahoma defense right now to hold Nebraska down there. Bergamo rifles a shot to Shemblin, and he gets up to the 26-yard line. First down, Nebraska. Big play, big play. Nebraska could not afford any mistake down deep in their own territory, back at their own seven-yard line. He put the ball up and picked up a first down, took him out of that dangerous area. Third quarter statistics. Oklahoma with the edge in first downs. Yards running, total yards, offensive plays, and time of possession by just a little, but they're down by 10 on the scoreboard. On the most important statistic, the score. First down, Cornhuskers, their own 26-yard line. It's burned. Jammed up. No place to go and drop for a two-yard loss. Number 39, Brett Selmeyer, was the man who led the wedge. And then here came Big 70, Hudgens, and 85, Hunt. And that's what's left in the ball game, 14.06. Been watching this football game, uh, along certainly with you, Keith, and I didn't realize that the time of possession was 27 minutes and 39 seconds for Oklahoma and only 17.21, over 10 minutes difference in possession time. Didn't look like it. Hasn't looked like it. New football on the field. We've had no precipitation of any kind today. It's too cold. All the pipes frozen. <laughs> Too much time, Nebraska. Just brought in one of those warm balls you've been talking about. <laughs> Put it in the heater and brought it out here so they can throw it a little bit. That is the first penalty of the ball game on Nebraska, if in fact it is on Nebraska. It just seemed like they took too much time. It might be something else, I don't know. The referee checking with his colleagues to make sure the decision is correct here. And I always like to see that. Well, I think what happened there was they checked on the time, and uh, the, the man who keeps the official time said no, they had not exceeded it, and so consequently, uh, there is no penalty of any kind. It's second down and about 13 yards to go. For Nebraska, back around the 18 yard line, fullback Donnell hits it out to the 26 maybe 27 yard line which will bring a third and long about third and nine we'll see whether or not Paragama puts it up this time or whether or not he's going to try to come up with a screen or a draw which we haven't seen in the course of the game Dufresne is in number 88 Spath is out Bobby Thomas wide right so Shamblin He's going to throw. Oh, there comes Hunt. Hunt missed him, but the rest of the Sooners were over there, and they were able to get in. Mike Phillips and Obi Moore. So the Sooners turn in a big defensive play when they needed it, and now will force Nebraska to punt. 13-16 to go in the ball game. Hunt can really move, can he? Oh yes. Woo. Last minute explanation. Over the deep back for Oklahoma. Over his deep. Big rush. Punt is away. Pretty fair punt, too, into that win. Hover's got it back at the 39. Go anywhere. And he retreats to the 37. So there, Oklahoma will have it. First down. 35 yard punt into a howling wind. And we'll see now what Oklahoma can do. Ah! My broker thinks it's a good investment. Well, mine's not so sure. Ted, Ted. My broker is E.F. Hutton. And E.F. Hutton says... When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Through my telepathic powers, I shall attempt to transmit this exact signature to my assistant 3,000 miles away. With Xerox telecopier transceivers, simply by dialing an ordinary telephone, you can send copies of letters, drawings, even signatures, cross town or cross country in a matter of minutes. If your business needs information quickly, your Xerox telecopier representative will show you how to do the trick. Tonight, Heisman Trophy candidate Tony Dorsett leads top-ranked Pittsburgh in a prime-time collision with Penn State. 
see the number one team in the country battle Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions tonight at 9 Eastern Time over most of these ABC stations. 12 minutes and 43 seconds to play in the ball game. Nebraska trying to break the Oklahoma winning string of four consecutive Sooner victories. Trying to do it here at home before the 87th consecutive sellout crowd in Lincoln. It's first down at the 37-yard line for Oklahoma. They trail 17 to 7. Thomas Lott keeps the ball. Pitches it wide to Horace Ivory. Runs through one tackle. Good play by Ivory. Dave Butterfield could not get a hold of him well enough to stop him. Yeah, the Oklahoma backs are not brought down by just one tackler. They, they can really move, and this is one of the reasons they've been so successful with a running game. One defender cannot bring them down. Ivory now with 102 yards on 16 carries in the ball game. There's the total on the Oklahoma rushing for the day. They've spread it around pretty well. On first down, Locke keeps it. Gives it back to Peacock. Oh, no. Peacock may go. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> 51 yards. Elvis Peacock, when he gets that much open field, is about as hard as anybody you'll ever see to bring down. And he just simply made his cut, went right between those two deep defenders and was gone. Now you've got time for Oklahoma called on the field with 12.28 to play in the ball game. And a successful conversion here will bring Oklahoma within three. If they decide to go for two and make it, it'll be only a two-point difference. We'll be right back. United introduced its first wide-body plane in 1970. You liked our 747 so much, you said. More. So we introduced more. And they made you so comfortable you wanted. More yet. At United, you're the boss. So we gave you more yet. 747s and DC-10. Today, United flies more wide-body planes than anyone. Because you said. More. Fly the friendly skies of United. Where you're the boss. This is my first car. Where do I get good auto service without a hassle? Don't you know there's good news round the corner? Good year, wherever you are. Good year, good and close to home. Presenting the Goodyear promise for hassle-free auto service. We do professional work. We only do the work you authorize. We return worn-out parts for your inspection. No hassle, no problems, no fooling. Goodyear tires and Goodyear service for more good years in your car. All right. Oklahoma now apparently is going to go for the two points. If they make it, it'll be 17 to 15. Then the field goal could put them ahead or possibly win. If they fail here, then they're going to really have to get to work. Lot keeping, pitching, Peacock, dive! No! Didn't make it. Just that short. That was close. I gotta think, that I know Pillen was involved. It looked like, yes, Jeff Pullen, 66, the middle guard. Now let's go back to the touchdown run. Peacock really turns on the, the Jets here, cuts back to the inside, no chance whatsoever. He had full momentum going. Now, Cletus Pillen, the linebacker, was coming the right way, then went back the other way on the fake. And then really never had a chance to get back. And look how, how he might have been involved. See how close he was to Lott? Here and right here, look how close. He was one step away, the two steps that he went to the inside on the fullback fake. And here we are on the two-point play. Let's see how close he is to this sideline here. It's Lott dealing the ball off to Peacock. Oh, we can't see. Oh, right there he is, right about the six-inch line. Oh, that's close, wasn't it? Woo! So it is 17-13 as Oklahoma kicks off. It goes to Curtis Craig up on the six-yard line. And Craig is hammered as he comes to the 19. Well, he really was hammered. He was scissored. Number 36 gets knocked off of the bottom of the stack. For Oklahoma, Roger Owen cut him down. Two plays for the 63 yards. Didn't use much time, did they? 
25 seconds for two players, which means Mr. Peacock travels rapidly. Got to keep in mind, too, that uh, wind is in the favor of Oklahoma this fourth quarter. Sooners have not thrown the ball all day. They have yet to put it up with 12.23 to go in the ball game. They run 56 plays. Right now it's Nebraska in possession. First down at the 19. They need some first downs for a while here to keep possession. It burns. Trying to get to the sidelines. He gets up to about the 21 before he is shoved out by Selmeyer. Let's go back again to that two-point try and note again how close he was to getting it in. Peacock gets the ball from Lott. Looks like he has the momentum to take it in. The defensive halfback puts a good tackle on him. Look how close he comes to the line. Now we're screened off by an Oklahoma sign there on the back of that jacket, but as he moves away from that right here, you'll see the Peacock, his shoulders, number four there, are on the left side of the goal line. Ferragamo throws to Byrne. And the pass is complete at the 25-yard line. Scott Hill hits the receiver hard and drills him back. And Burns is not able to get in there for the first down, so it's going to bring up a third and about three. Ferragamo now seven for 17 at 115 yards. The clock running, 11.50 to go in a ball game, and Nebraska leading 17 to 13. Alito is way, way, way wide to the left. Out of the picture for Nebraska. Perikama wants to throw, has a man, hits Chandler. First down, Nebraska. That's a gutsy call. And they needed it, too. They really needed that first down. Chandler's having a great day. They broke the second receiver out from the inside in the slot position. Number 81, Chamblin. Chamblin just turns to the outside. The corner man is occupied by Melito, I believe it is. He comes back and makes the play. Terry, you know, that was uh, Hebert, makes the play, but he was occupied by the wide receiver. Shamblin now three catches. 34. Century player in the game. All right. Each player. $1,000 given to his general scholarship fund of his university by Chevrolet. It's Donnell, the fullback, straight ahead. On first down from the 30, from the 23, and he got about a yard. That's just about all. Monty Anthony comes into the lineup now, replacing Burns at the tailback or the eyeback position. With four minutes and 15 seconds now showing, and time is definitely the ally of the Cornhuskers as long as they can keep playing football down around the Oklahoma 20 yard line with a four point lead. They're in pretty good shape. Run that clock down, that's what they're hoping for. Ferragamo is going to put it up, throws to space, off his hands, incomplete. Couldn't control it as he went out of bounds. He was covered by Henderson and Peters for Oklahoma. Good recovery there by Henderson. Ferragamo, 144 yards in the game. Nine completions and 20 attempts. Ferragamo lays it up there real good. But there's great recovery here by Henderson and Peters coming over. But Henderson, or rather Henderson was a guy, Zach Henderson was a guy that saved that from being a, a good gainer. It is third down and nine from the 22 of Oklahoma. That's Monty Anthony. And the Nebraska offensive front blowing him out of there right now as Anthony skitters down to the 15-yard line for seven yards. They've got to go to the 13 to get a first down. Going to go for the field goal or not? 3.40 left to go. Do you want the three points? Or do you want to try to make the first down? Let's see what they're doing. Well, they'll take time out to talk about it. Try to make a decision on it. Right. 3.35 to play in the game, and Nebraska leads by four points. All right, Wally, what's so good about this McCulloch chainsaw? Okay, the Mini Mac 35 has auto sharp. It sharpens the chain automatically, and this McCulloch oils the chain all by itself. Mm. What was that safety feature? Oh, the chain break. It stops the chain in milliseconds. You can't buy another chainsaw with all these features at any price. And it all comes in this carrying case. Well, then you don't mind me carrying it to my yard. I've got some wood to cut. Look for McCulloch in the yellow pages under saws. Chevrolet announces a $200 cash bonus direct from Chevrolet on every new Chevy Vega and Chevy Chevette. 
Delivered from stock by January 10, 1977, or ordered by December 10, 1976. This $200 cash bonus applies regardless of purchase price agreed on at dealership. It can be used against the down payment, or a check for $200 will come to you from Chevrolet. So see your Chevrolet dealer now for a $200 cash bonus on Vega and Chevette. All right, the conference has concluded on the sidelines. Tom Osborne and Vince Ferragamo. Here comes a big moment in this football game tonight at 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. Pittsburgh and Penn State. Oh, oh boy. Do you think this one's been fun? <laughs> Got another one coming up. And two more tomorrow. Army, Navy, and USC, Notre Dame. They're going to go on fourth and a long two. Ferragamo to throw. Incomplete intended for Shemplin. Zach Henderson knocked it loose. It was a good defensive play against the almost perfectly executed offensive play. That's two out of the last three plays. Zach Henderson has been a very important defender on. Here he comes. It looks like he's beat. Shemplin turns out, but here comes Zach Henderson from underneath. Watch him reach inside, put enough of a hand on it to shake it loose. That's the difference between a first down and possession going to the Oklahoma Sooners. Now the Sooners with exactly three and a half minutes to play in the game. Get the football first down at their own 16-yard line. Last time they had it, they fumbled it away. Lot pitches it outside. Uh -huh. We've got an option play going here with Woody Shepard. Throws it downfield. The pass is complete to Steve Rhodes, the wide receiver, the first Oklahoma pass of the day. And it's a first down at the Nebraska 37-yard line. Talk about a turnaround. They execute the option down to the wide side of the field. Luck pitches the ball out. It looked like it was going to be underthrown from up here, but it is right there and a great catch and a change in field position. Here's another angle from the ground level. There's the throw, and he's knocked down just at that point. He doesn't you. know that he completed that pass. That Woody Shepard, that sophomore Fodessa, turned a pretty fair play there. The ball goes to Kenny King from the 37 to the 35 for two. The play was good for 48 yards. He snapped that ball just at the last second, was able to get it away, and then had to wait for the roar to see whether or not it was complete. He, well, was he took, uh, took a Elvis Peacock out of there, slipped Woody Shepard in there, and I guess he can throw the ball pretty good. Yeah. First pass of the day and a big boomer. For the sooner. You didn't say that, did you? I didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> Two minutes and 40 seconds to play in the ball game. 17 to 13. Nebraska leading in the ball game, and Oklahoma takes a timeout. And the clock stops at 2:37 to play in the ball game. Nebraska sitting on a four-point lead, and Oklahoma threatening. Is there a Swifty muffler shop around here? I got the guarantee. Nope. What did I tell you? He's got them all over back home. This here ain't back home. Well, what are you doing when you have muffler trouble? We just mosey down to that Midas muffler shop. Did what I did I tell you? You never know where you'll be when you'll need a muffler. But you do know one of our 800 Midas muffler shops will be there. Maine to California and Canada, too, we're specialists. We have to do a better job. Sooner or later, you're going to buy a recliner. And when you do, it's going to be a lazy boy. Which style? Well, that's up to you. Maybe this chair that rocks and reclines. Or this soft and comfortable contemporary. Or this wall recliner that stays one inch from the wall. Or a wall slow fed for two. The sooner you pick out your lazy boy, the better. Because they're all on sale right now. Second down and eight yards to go for Oklahoma at the Nebraska 35-yard line. Two minutes and 37 seconds to play in the ball game. Nebraska leading 17 to 13. The crowd is roaring. Thomas Lott exercising the privilege of walking away from the snap, asking for a little quiet. Also opened up the formation that time, which they haven't been doing. Put both ends out. Yeah, but they're two tight ends. They got Victor Hicks, or is it Mathis? Mathis 86 is in. Is Hicks in, no Rhodes is at the other side. Yeah. So it is Mathis from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Wide to the right side. Thomas Lott coming down the line. Gets away from the pursuit coming from the back side. That was Pullen, number 66, chasing him. And as he turned up in, then Pillen got him. 
Oklahoma with one timeout remaining in the ball game. 2.20, the clock is running. Hover comes in with a play. That play gained down to the 31-yard line. Here's Pillen making the tackle. He's been in here all day. He's blocked down partially, and then gets back up and makes the play on Lott. Hangs on as Lott drives forward. 31-yard line, third down. They need three. Lott keeps it upfield. Got a first down to the 25. Pillen again on the tackle. I guess you've got to seriously consider Mr. Pillen as the defensive player of the ball game, don't you? He's been all over the field. This is a real humdinger here. The ball's at the 25-yard line, a minute and 55. And all the marbles, you know, in this game. I think sometimes we lose sight of that. The Orange Bowl, the co-championship. Colorado waiting in the wings. Ball is inside the 25-yard line. First down, Oklahoma. Lot wants to throw. Nope, it's going to be a reverse. And the wide receiver, Rhodes, is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Number 75, it looked like, so was the man that penetrated. Randy Peschel for Nebraska. Back to the 30-yard line. If you watch here closely, one of the things that happened on this split end reverse is that the wide receiver, Rhodes, slips. You see him slip right there? And the timing was just off enough. Otherwise, he might have gotten leverage on the corner. That's the last time out for Oklahoma with 124 to go in the game. Hi, I'm Tony Dorsett from the University of Pittsburgh. We're having an outstanding season here at the university. We're undefeated and untied. Some people say I have a good chance of winning the Heisman Trophy. But my main objective right now is to beat Penn State. And we'll see if we can do that later this evening on ABC. Ivory's got how many yards, you say? He's got over 100. Under, uh, one minute and 24 seconds to play in the ball game. Second down, the ball is back near the 30-yard line. They've got to go to the 14-yard line to get a first down. So it is second down at about 16 for Oklahoma. Nebraska with a six-man front. Lock back to throw. Nobody to throw to. And they get him on the 34-yard line. Ron Pruitt and Randy Fisher. Two tackles. Got him. Big play. Big play. And Oklahoma does not have another timeout to spend. The clock will continue to run. Lock comes out of the ball game on third down. The football is back at the 34. It is third and 20. And Dean Blevins is the quarterback. He throws it. He hits Rose. He pitches it to Peacock. Peacock. First down. Out of bounds. That's the goal line. Oh, the old flea flicker. How do you do? <laughs> wow. It's going to be first down. Go to go for Oklahoma down on the two yard line with 44 seconds to play and no timeouts remaining. This is as well executed as you could uh, on any kind of a play. The, the pass is just right. The timing is just right. Peacock is right there. He deals the ball off, and here they are with the ball on the two yard line. But the one thing I remember is the. Nebraska Cornhuskers Huskers putting on a great goal line stand against Missouri here a few weeks ago. Let's see if they can duplicate that. They're going to have to if they expect to hold on to win. Lot is back in. No timeouts remaining. First and goal at the two. The pitch wide. Oh, Peacock. Oh. It's touchdown. 38 seconds to play. Morris Ivory through a sensational block to get Peacock into the end zone. Oklahoma has regained the lead with only 38 seconds remaining. Incredible. What a drive. What key plays they came up with. 84 yards, eight plays. In two minutes and 52 seconds, they flipped it out to Rhodes. Levins hit him right on the numbers, and Rhodes flipped it back to Peacock, and they got him at the two, and then Peacock comes right back and takes it in. Wow. Well, you can't say too much, too many good things about that drive because they were really under pressure, the big halfback pass, and then, of course, the flea flicker were the two big plays. And of course, yeah, we, a, we better not forget Woody Shepard's uh, participation yeah, in this yeah. ball game. You know, that right, was a substantial right. play he delivered. Right. Tonight at 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. 
Pitt and Penn State. Oklahoma is going to absorb five yards here on the extra point try for taking too much time. They don't have any timeouts remaining. Uh, I'm going to tell you, under the circumstances, I do believe I might just kick it, but I don't know. It looks like they're going to go for two, doesn't it? No, I think they're going to no, there's, kick it. No, he's out yeah, there. Von Schroeman is out there. Nebraska has one timeout remaining. They'll get the ball back with about 35 or so seconds to play. Ron Truman is out to kick. Hits it out of Hebert's hole, and he just drilled it. So, lightning strikes for the Sooners. Now, here's the pass play that got this whole thing going. Woody Shepard throwing down. I know, this is Clevens. This is the flip Rose. back. Yeah. yeah. Steve Rhodes' foot receiver came down, just curl hooked the ball was right there, and they just peeled the ball off the peacock. You know, and the thing that play, you've seen it many years. Uh, I've seen it operated successfully, but the key thing is the timing. Now here's a touchdown. Lot just deals the ball off again to Peacock, and he hits the corner, and there's no way they can catch him there in pursuit. And he's got the leverage on it, and there's the touchdown. They're one step. There's Pillen again. He's been all over the field. Great block over there by Horace Ivey to get him around. So you had Woody Shepard on a halfback pass. Then you had Blevins passing to the wide receiver Rhodes, who pitched it away at the Peacock. And then you had Elvis taking it in. They didn't pass all day, and the thing that won for him was the pass. Two big plays defensively by Zach Henderson on Nebraska's last offensive yeah. possession. Pretty big, too. Here's a pop-up by Von Chumman. Short. It is taken by Dodie Donnell, the short man. He runs it back across the 40 to the 41. Now with 34 seconds to play in the ball game, Nebraska gets the ball with one timeout remaining going into the win. And that uh, extra point that was made to make it 20 to 17 was very important because had they not made that extra point, a field goal, a couple of first down plays here by Nebraska could, could have put them in a position for a field goal even though they're fighting the win. Well, you know that Bill Mallory and the Colorado Buffaloes are dancing right now. Ferragamo's running. He's just going to take it up. He'll get his first down and then take it out of bounds to stop the clock at 25 seconds to play. He got a fairly decent yardage out of that. He got it to the 42-yard line. Good judgment. You know, you're still in a position here with another first down, a sideline pass, and uh, even though you're fighting that wind, I don't know what the range is going to be as far as the field goal is concerned with this win. Well, his longest, Al Eblen's longest, was 47 yards against Colorado. We might have to have a conference vote if they should wind up tying here. I would think probably Colorado would go on to the Orange Bowl on the basis of a tie. Ferragamo to throw it. He goes, and the pass is incomplete to Melito. Pass was low, and Chuck trying to slide along could not scoop it up with 17 seconds remaining. Credential College scoreboard will come up following the ball game with Warner Wolf and Dave Diles and some details, some highlights from this ball game. Looking ahead to tonight, which Pitt will be playing Penn State at 9 Eastern Time, Three River Stadium to be seen here on ABC. Back goes Ferragamo, and he's belted by Greg Selmeyer. He is sacked back at the 48-yard line and hurt. He really took a shot, stops the clock at nine seconds to play in the game. And Oklahoma leading Nebraska 20 to 17 on a spectacular finish here in Lincoln. The defensive player of the ball game, Cletus Pillen. A linebacker for Nebraska, and in Cletus Pillen's honor will go a $1,000 scholarship award from Chevrolet to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Nebraska. And the vote for the offensive player of the ball game, I would think, probably has to be Horace Ivory, who played a complete ball game, going for better than 100 yards today on offense and throwing the key block that sprung Peacock for the go-ahead touchdown. Here's a big load. In, Randy Garcia gets the pass away down the sideline, out of bounds, time expires, and the Oklahoma Sooners have now beaten the Nebraska Cornhuskers five consecutive times. And congratulations to the Colorado Buffaloes. Fellas, you can pack your swimsuit and think about going to Florida. Well, they sat back and uh, didn't look like they were going to go to 
Miami Beach, but they're going to be there now. It was a great comeback, great uh, pass, clutch passing uh, in that last drive by the Oklahoma Sooners. It was a great, can't say too much about the comeback. I didn't think they were going to be able to do it because they had not been able to pass. Oklahoma wins the game 20 to 17. What does it take to start the wheels of American industry rolling? It takes machines, men, and money. That's where savings and loans come in. Money you save with us goes back into your community in the form of home loans. The savings and loan commitment to housing generates over $100 million a day for jobs, goods, and services. Help keep America rolling by having your savings account at your savings and loans. If you really love coffee, you got to see this. It's a brand new Naroko Dollar Brew coffee maker, and it's got a brand new look. Isn't it a beauty? And the exclusive Naroko Dollar Brew lets you dial coffee to exactly the taste you like. Light, medium, dark. And perfect every time. Only Norelco has Dollar Brew. Look, you can pay less, you can pay more, but you just can't buy a finer coffee maker than Norelco. <laughs> A day of heartbreak for Nebraska partisans as Oklahoma comes storming back to win the ball game by a score of 20 to 17. That will send Colorado to the Orange Bowl, Nebraska to the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl. The offensive player of the game, Horace Ivory of Oklahoma, a thousand dollar scholarship in his name. They have a Chevrolet to the Oklahoma General Scholarship Fund. Cletus Pellin, the defensive player of the game, the Nebraska linebacker. Our spotter, Jerry Klein, Jimmy Ritz, our statistician. Our travel arrangements paid through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Fly the friendly skies of United where you're the boss. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as sport television. The final score, Oklahoma 20, Nebraska 17. Watch the ABC Evening News with Harry Reasoner and Barbara Walters every weeknight. you remember anything about that wire story? What's that? Jill, about Osborne? This is the college football scoreboard. Well, good afternoon and a belated Thanksgiving uh, holiday greeting to all of you. Dave Dials in New York along with Warner Wolf. Traditional game, a very traditional victory for yeah. Oklahoma. That's four in a row and there are recurring reports that Tom Osborne at Nebraska is in trouble, but you have the top ten. All right, here we go. Now, this is the coaches' poll, the top ten, and, of course, Nebraska will drop after today. Number one rated pit will play Penn State tonight right here on ABC at 9 o'clock. Penn State has won six in a row, and, of course, Pitt is undefeated. Last year, Penn State beat Pitt 7-6, to six, and Pitt hasn't beaten Penn State in ten years. Number two ranked USC. Now, they've won nine in a row since their opening loss to Missouri. They will play Notre Dame tomorrow in Los Angeles. That'll be here on ABC at 4 p.m. Michigan finishes 10 and 1. Their only loss was to Purdue. And by the way, Purdue coach Alex Agassi fired today. Number four rated Georgia, 9 and 1. They'll finish the season tomorrow against Georgia Tech in Athens. 
and then play Pitt in the Sugar Bowl, which will be seen here on ABC New Year's Day. Number five ranked Maryland, they finished the season 11 and 0. They'll play Texas Tech or Houston in the Cotton Bowl. Number six ranked UCLA, they finished 9, 1 and 1. They will play Alabama in the Liberty Bowl right here on ABC on December the 20th. Number seventh ranked Houston has a chance to win the Southwest Conference and the Cotton Bowl tomorrow if they beat Rice. Number eight ranked Nebraska, should we say were ranked eight. They lost today, as you saw, 20 to 17. By the way, if Nebraska had tied Oklahoma, Colorado still would have gone to the Orange Bowl. Ohio State will play Colorado, by the way, now in the Orange Bowl. And Texas Tech plays Arkansas tomorrow, and Texas Tech has an outside chance of the Cotton Bowl, but they have to hope that Houston loses to Rice. Dave and I will be back in just a moment. On the first day of Christmas, guess what I gave to me? One stomach leaping, one head a-throbbing, the office party. A desk full of bills, twelve relatives, and a plop-plop and a fizz-fizz. Those speedy bubbles. This holiday, keep the Alka-Seltzer handy and give yourself a gift, fast relief. And a plop-plop and a fizz-fizz. When it's so cold, a radiator can freeze solid, and you're still rolling. That's the mark of Xerox. When it's so hot, a radiator can blow its top, and you're still driving cool. That's the mark of Xerox. When corrosion is eating holes in radiators, and you're still going strong. That's the mark of Xerox. All year, all weather protection. That's the mark of Xerox. Tonight, 9 o'clock on ABC, this gentleman, number 33, Tony Dorsett, with an excellent chance to win the Heisman Trophy. Pitt and Penn State, he needs only 158 yards to break Ed Marinaro's all-time rushing record for one season. Well, the Heisman, uh, is a great possibility. You know, I have a good chance right now. The reason why that we thought that he wasn't going to be a good athlete because he, he was always so slow. I didn't think he'd, I never did think he'd make it. I didn't think he'd play football, to tell you the truth. All right, tonight, Penn State and Pitt right here on ABC starting at 9 o'clock. Dave, what about yesterday's ball games? Well, they started a long weekend. We'll wind it up tomorrow, of course, with Army, Navy, and Notre Dame, Southern Cal. But yesterday, some traditional games, Texas A&M and Texas in a Southwest Conference duel. And this one, Texas A&M, the winner, 27-3. A&M kicker Tony Franklin with two field goals, one of them a 58-yarder. He holds the NCAA record now, 10 field goals of at least 50 yards. Rutgers ran its winning streak to 18 games, longest in the nation, 17-9 over Colgate. Some of you may have seen that game in the East last night. And East Carolina won the Southern Conference Championship, routing Appalachian State by a score of 35-7. Kent State over Northern Illinois, 42-0. I'm going to give you a name here, see if you remember. Art Best, remember him from Notre Dame? He's now playing at Kent State. All he did yesterday, four touchdowns, 168 yards rushing. Tennessee Chattanooga played East Tennessee State and won the game 23-14, UTC's best performance since 1968. And in a game you just saw, Oklahoma over Nebraska 20-17, Elvis Peacock, the winning touchdown, 38 seconds to go earlier in the fourth period. He had run 51 yards in the fourth period, so that's four in a row for Oklahoma over Nebraska. And we'll be right back. Smell like a man. There's something about Aqua Velva. He wants to be cool and refreshed. There's something about Aqua Velva. A man wants to feel like a man. Feel like a man. Cause there's something about an Aqua Velva man. Time up. Hey, man, you need a new stick. Now, Alan, what did the people need? Dr. Franklin, you need a new stick. A what? New right guard deodorant stick. It's the only stick that gives you that famous right guard all-day odor protection. The same all-day protection that's made right guard the number one men's deodorant for years. Keep it. Thank you. Hey, Slick, you need a new stick. Right guard deodorant stick for all-day odor protection. 
There was a controversial but accurate call in last night's Rutgers-Colgate game, won by Rutgers 17-9. It occurred in the third period with Colgate leading 6-3. Rutgers in punt formation, attempting to punt from the Colgate 46-yard line. The punter is Joe Moss, number 98. Now, you will see the ball sail over Moss's head. And it appears, as the ball will sail over Moss's head, here's the punter, that Rutgers recovers. But the rare call is Rule 10, Section 2, and you will see it. First of all, Coran pushes Moss, and it appears to be Colgate's ball. But no, as you watch the replay, let me read you the rule real fast. Rule 10, Section 2, the enforcement spot for fouls that occur during a kick before possession is gained reverts back to the original line of scrimmage. So the call is correct. Now watch Coran push Moss and then apparently recover the ball. But this is not the case. It was Rutgers' ball, and they mark off the 15-yard penalty. In other words, when a penalty occurs during the kick and there's no possession, it reverts back to the team with last had possession and the line of scrimmage. Uh, personally, I think the penalty is too severe because, in essence, Colgate not only lost possession of the ball, but they also lost, in effect, 54 yards difference. Instead of Colgate ball at the Rutgers 15, it was Rutgers ball at the Colgate 31, and certainly that was the key play in the game. An accurate call, but perhaps too severe a penalty. Dave and I will be back in just a moment. Why are men switching from aerosol hairsprays to Vitalis Super Hold Pump Spray? The pump? Because it doesn't spray any aerosol propellants. The pump? Well, it costs less to use. Save money. Because the pump is stronger. Can hold longer than the best-selling aerosol. The pump. Vitalis Super Hold Pump Spray. Now with an even finer spray. Why don't you switch from your aerosol to... The pump. Do, do, do. The pump. Here's your car battery. Add water. Keep it clean. It lasts an average of 38 months. Here's the battery that will make yours obsolete. The J.C. Penney battery. It started a revolution in car batteries. You never have to add water. It's so powerful, it's fully warranted for as long as you own your car. If it fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. <coughs> it's the last battery your car will ever need. Tomorrow on ABC, starting at 12.30 Eastern, Army, Navy, then at 4 o'clock, Notre Dame, Southern Cal. All right, David, once seven. again. Right. And tonight, Penn and Pitt, St Pitt and Penn State right here on ABC, 9 o'clock. The college scoreboard has been brought to you by Vitalis Super Hold, the pump. You'll never go back to Jar aerosol hairspray once you try the pump. And by Aqua Velvet. No fancy bottles, no fancy prices. Just cool and refreshing. Yes, there's something about an Aquavelva man. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. A big blast for the big guy, John Wayne. Frank Sinatra's host is Charles Bronson, Maureen O'Hara, Bob Hope, Angie Dickinson, James Stewart, Henry the Fonz Winkler, and a galaxy of stars. Pay an all-star tribute to John Wayne tonight at 8, 7 Central on ABC.